this morning I'm going to do a 14 mile marathon pace workout. Now the way I like to structure my weeks during peak marathon training is Monday is an easier day, Tuesday I'll always have a hard workout, and next week we'll get back after it at the track or the camp. It's not actually a track, it's a park, I don't love going onto those red ovals, I never do that. But my guy Cam, by the way, shout out to Cam who just raced his first marathon down in Kiowa. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys have raced Kiowa. We're getting back after it next week on Tuesday. Day, gonna start hitting some good lactate threshold workouts. Wednesday, I like to do either a recovery day or maybe some longer work. And then Thursday is my day where I always do race pace work. This is what I landed on in 2023, and it really helped me unlock new levels of fitness doing those two workouts a week and being consistent with it every week. Now, there's so many philosophies out there, there's so many theories on you gotta do lactate thresholds, you gotta do tempo workouts, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. For me, I've found that if I'm consistent every week on two Day and Thursday, and I increase the intensity of those workouts. So, for example, one Thursday when I was doing half marathon training, I might do four miles at race pace, and the next week, five miles, then six miles, then seven miles. It's a really simple way to train, but increasing that intensity over time while holding the same volume and naturally having my easy runs get a little bit faster really helped me build fitness and get my 119 28 PR in the half marathon. So, today it's Thursday, we're going to do a marathon race pace workout because I'm training. For a marathon coming up in April. So let's get this Ooh, man. That was a good run. All right guys, I just finished my workout for the morning. I was gonna do 14 miler, but I didn't think I was gonna have time because again, I got a late start of an up editing these videos. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about when thinking about this theme of consistency. You have to decide your non-negotiables, which are gonna be determined by what your constraints are in life. For example, I know that I'm gonna need to work every day in my day job, and I know that I'm going to be posting these videos every single day. So I have to work my training around all that. So I create the system of non-negotiables, right? Every weekend, I'm gonna hit at least a 20 miler every week I'm gonna do a race pace workout and no matter what I'm getting my 100 110 miles per week so for you I would decide one to three non-negotiables every single week as you're thinking about your 2024 training and I would do it block by block right so if you have a spring marathon or a spring half marathon commit to doing a 12 mile long run at least every week commit to doing a baseline of 40 or 50 miles per week unless it's a down week commit to doing at least one structured workout per week and hold yourself accountable to that goal now on this theme of accountability community and friends are a great way to do that i always talk about my guy cam we go to the track together we text every few days about weird training concepts we've learned about the newest shoes so getting a training buddy getting an accountability partner is huge if you need one i can be your guy email me at yoana at subwell.io leave a note down here in the comment section send me a dm on instagram but getting someone who can help you is going to be huge to staying on track this year now the other thing i want to talk about when it comes to consistency is that it's not always pretty. Sometimes it means doing the same thing every week. If you're committing to doing a 12 mile long run on the weekend, you might be grinding that out at the same 8.30, 9.30 pace for 10 weeks until it starts to get a little bit easier. Now, last summer, I committed to doing 16 weeks of 16 mile long run straight, and it never got easier throughout the whole thing. I'm only starting to see the benefits now when I'm going to 18, 20, 22 miles, and I get up to 16 miles, feeling like I used to feel at four miles. So these things are gonna take time and it's the same approach I have with this YouTube channel. I'm not putting out these videos to go viral. I don't do clickbait, I don't do wacky thumbnails. I'm just here to put in that work every single day, every single week, and if I can see it grow 1% each day, each week, if I can see my running get a little bit better every month, if I see my heart rate dropping, I know I'm doing the right thing. You gotta work 100 days straight chipping away before you make that big breakthrough sometimes. All right guys, five minutes until this Zoom call, so let me go in there, get myself a little bit decent, and then we'll be back at it later. I just hit 13 miles at about a 622 pace, which last year was my half marathon PR. And I'm telling you, just that consistent work, day in and day out, that helped me do that, that helped make it easy. We do the challenging every day until it becomes routine.
The second thing I wanted to talk to you about was the importance of building systems to hold us accountable. So as we think about planning out our trading, as we think about those goals and what we want to do every single week, we need to have things set up so that it's easy for us to hit those goals. So for example, every night before I go to bed, I lay out my camera hoodie, I lay out my hat, I fill up my water bottle and I put it out right by the coffee machine so that I start my day off first thing hydrating. That's a system that I've built so that I can hydrate every day. Same thing with that lunch you see me make, right? It's not great to eat processed foods all the time, but there are trade-offs when it comes to setting our non-negotiables. And for me, I know that I need to be fueled and have easy calories around to hit my training goals. So that's a system that I have in place. Charlie and I joke around, we call it emergency lunch. Those morning star buffalo patties are my emergency lunch right now. We always have two bags of them frozen in the freezer and then bagels or something that I can make a quick sandwich with. And so that's a system I have in place to ensure that I'm setting myself up for success when it comes to meeting my training goals because if I don't have lunch, I'm not gonna be able to execute on my second workout of the day. I would ask you to come up with one to two changes that you can make starting today. They'll help you train a little bit better. So what's a system you can implement? Is it setting your shoes out the night before? Is it setting an alarm in the morning if you usually just let your body clock wake you up? Is it always having juice or a recovery drink on stock so that you can reward yourself after a run? Whatever you need right now to be able to hit your goals, that's what the system should be built to support. So systems can change. That's why I'm not a big fan of always having the same morning routine. I'm not a big fan of always doing the same thing. I like to design my life around what the most important goals are. So after you decide your non-negotiables, you have to build a system so that you can execute on those non-negotiables every day, week, and month as we get into peak training. All right, guys, one more Zoom call left into the home stretch, and it's gonna be dinner and gonna hit the Y for my second run of the day on the treadmill. <sighs> Paternity leave is so close, man. what we're building right now making some improvements to the website i don't even know if you guys know about everything we got on the website here we got the shoe matcher tool of course which you can use to get matched with your next pair of running shoes which i talk about this guy all the time but i don't know if you guys know that we got the whole entire shoe database too right here so this has got all of the latest and greatest running shoes that's what the shoe matcher pulls from it takes all these shoes and calculates which one's gonna be the best for you based on your answers. What I'm doing is I'm making some improvements to the site. I'm doing a page with just my favorite picks for running shoes for winter 2024. Alpha Fly 3 you may or may not be on it. I haven't completely finished building up the back end. This is what's gonna be going up to the site too. And also gonna build out some gear and fuel recommendations in here as well. So we're steadily working every day. And we still got this computer. Gotta keep the calories on deck. I'm getting there. All right guys, long day at work. One of the kids is in bed, dinner is done. I'm gonna get changed and we're gonna go drive to the Y to do my second run of the day on the treadmill over there. In the winter, I don't love running outside at night in the dark and today I had a lot of meetings and I couldn't get out to beat the sunset. So we're gonna have to do this at the gym. So the last thing that I wanna talk to you guys about and I'm gonna make sure that I organize my thoughts, get them all right while I'm on that treadmill is setting goals. So if you want to make this the best year of your life when it comes to running, it's super important that you have tangible goals. And yes, that does mean that you have to have numbers tied to them. That is my philosophy. That's what works for me. And it will work for you too if you implement it in the right way. So I will discuss my approach to goal setting and what worked for me and what made 2023 the best year of my running life after we get this run in. Just pull up to the gym. I'm not gonna take the camera in and be that guy running on the treadmill filming myself, but gonna hit eight miles aerobic. Before we go in, I did wanna say, a lot of people ask me how I can do eight, 10, 12, 14. I've gone up to 16 miles on the treadmill and I don't mind it, honestly. I kinda like going there because the neighborhood where I live is super hilly and I do something on the treadmill that I don't do 
any time else when I run, and that is listen to music. So I always look forward to having some nice music to listen to when I go on the treadmill. Today, I'm gonna be playing the Griselda album, giving it a re-listen, the one that came out a few years ago. But having some good music to listen to, that's what makes a great treadmill run for me, and it's a time to not get a ton of elevation in. So that's another great example of a system that I have for myself that makes me enjoy running just a little bit more. So let's get this eight miles in, I'll be back in a GIF. Right, guys, just finished eight miles on the treadmill. Did the last 10 minutes at about marathon pace. Picked it up there just to get a little bit of juice. I saw this thing the other day from some sub 230 marathoners that were saying the best way to run a good marathon is to train for the last six miles of the race. And that's a big principle that I've been following anyway, extending my long runs, running hard on tired legs. But that's just really been sticking with me this week and giving me that little bit of extra boost it needed to run hard at the end when I'm tired. So last 10 minutes marathon pace caps it off at 21 miles for the day today another solid day of marathon training in the books like i said earlier it's a brick by brick building the system building the house we're not here to pr overnight we're here to build toward it day after day week after week month after month and training block after training block so with that let me drive home shower and i'll break down how i plan goals for training the last thing I wanted to say before we drive home is that this parking lot was a little fuller January 4th than it was at the end of last year when I was coming in here in December. But you know what? I love to see it, man. People getting fit, people getting after their goals, and hopefully we'll have people staying accountable. That's my goal this year. If I could have an impact helping one more person hold on to their New Year's resolution, then this video will have been a success. So if you're watching this and you want to stay accountable, they say it takes three weeks to build a new habit, three weeks to build that system. Set a reminder in your phone or on your notes app or wherever you, you do your planning for three weeks from today and leave a comment or shoot me an email when that three weeks is up and we'll help each other be accountable this year. Thursday. It's always an interesting challenge when I do these late double runs at the gym because I gotta eat with the family before. I, sometimes I overshoot it and I eat way too much and then I'm getting just not good to have a lot in your stomach on the treadmill. And sometimes I don't eat enough and I'm shaky and I'm telling myself, well, it's good to run when your glycogen stores are depleted because that helps you get more efficient at burning fat, which is true. But today I did it perfectly, no stomach issues. I had two tacos and we got the corn flour tortilla blends right here with some guac and black beans and I'm about to have the same thing for my second dinner right now. And my rule for running, this is another good tip for planning 2024 to be your best running year ever is don't be underfueled. always be consuming. Those are my rules of running APC. I do not run for weight loss. I run to push myself and to meet my goals and to make the challenging become routine. And the way that I can do that is by being fueled all the time. So I try to never be hungry. I try to always be eating to meet my caloric needs. You can get a test for probably like 20 bucks at a local sports nutritionist. I did this in the summer of 2022 and they told me I needed to eat about 4,000 calories a day when I'm training like I am. So your caloric needs are probably different. I'm all the way at the super high end of the spectrum, but if you need 2,500, 3,000 calories a day, you should be meeting that. You don't want to be underfueled because that's going to make it a whole lot harder to hit your ambitious goals. Now, the last little thing I wanted to talk to you all about is how to set goals. And if you take one thing away from this video, it's to control what you can control. When you're thinking about planning this to be a great year of running, there's so many variables out there. You could get sick, you could get injured, you could have a big project come up at work, you could have major life changes that all influence your training. On race day, there's so many different things that could go wrong, especially if you're training for the marathon. And I know this from personal experience because I had a horrible race in my marathon, Charlotte 2022, and it wasn't great. But what you can control is everything that goes into train, everything that leads up to race day. You can control what time you get out of bed in the morning. You can control how many times you run per week. So when you're thinking about setting goals, it's great to set a goal time for the race. Maybe you wanna break four hours in the marathon, 3.30, three hours in the marathon. My guy Quentin from Kentucky told me he's trying to break four minutes in the mile. Shout out Quentin from Kentucky doing big things. No matter what your goal is, 
Yes, we can have that time goal. What I've found works best is to also have a goal about the process, the goal that we can control. So for me, it's weekly mileage, it's long runs, and it's workouts per week. Again, it goes back to those non-negotiables. I always tie my goals to my non-negotiables. So of course, you pick your race goal, whether it's a marathon or a half marathon, and then you build everything else around it, that system with the non-negotiables and the goals that you can control, and that's what's gonna set you up on the path to success. Now, I have a friend from college, Dimitri. He's one of the smartest people I know. He actually is going to Harvard Business School right now. And we were talking last time, we were hanging out down in Austin earlier last year around this time, and he's also a runner. He's also in fitness in college. He was in the best shape out of all everyone in my whole friend group. And he told me a big reason that he loves running is because it's one of the things in life that we can control. We can't always control what's going on with work, but the more we pour into running, the more time we spend going through the process of training, building our system, we will get better over time. And I share that same sentiment that Dimitri told me. That's the reason I love running. I know if I extend my weekly long run to 22 miles per week, if I extend my medium long run to 14 miles per week, it's gonna feel a lot easier when I go on those eight mile, 10 mile runs on Monday. If I consistently do double days, week after week, month after month, that second run like I did today is gonna feel a whole lot easier. A great example of this is when I first started doing doubles last year, I would only do four miles on the treadmill for my second run. Now I've extended that to eight miles and the total volume for the day being 21 miles. Now I have so much farther to go in my running journey, but what I can tell you where I do feel extremely credible is my commitment, my accountability, and putting in the work day in and day out. And that's what I would ask you to do. Last thing here is what can you commit to doing tomorrow that you think you can do three months from now, six months from now, and nine months from now? What system can you build today that you can see yourself executing on December 15th, 2024? And for me, I committed to doing these daily videos last year and I've executed building this community slowly, building Supwell slowly. And I believe in taking the long road, taking the long way home. And I think that's the only way to get it done, guys. So if you align with this, let me know in the comments what your goals are for this year. I'd also love to know what system do you want to set up or have you set up in the past that's worked really well for you when it comes to improving your running. So for me, setting up that water bottle the night before, that is my number one system. And then emergency lunches are my number two system. I hope that helps you plan how to make 2024 the best year of your running. I'm coming off a great 2023 where I raced three different half marathons and chipped away at my time. Last one ended up being a 119.28. This year, we're going to take it even lower. So I hope you can take a little bit of what I've learned from the process of training and from building these systems and from committing to non-negotiables and to implement that into your training and into how you live your daily life. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another video.